guys, it's Christy, and today I am talking about simplifying your writing by reconsidering speech tags. So do you ever wonder why some novels are just quicker to read than others? Yes, page count has something to do with it, but there are other factors at play. So one thing I wanted to talk about in this video is speech tags, when to use them, and more importantly, when not to use them. So yes, we want to write poetic prose that captivate our readers, but we also want to leave them wondering how the heck they got to page 150 already when they just started. Personally, I want to make sure that I let my readers know how much I value their time and money, and I want to make sure that I write stories that are very easy for them to read. So by easy, I don't mean superficial or shorter necessarily, I just mean something that flows easier for them. I mean writing that is to the point, where all the extraneous information is removed. So one of the ways that we can achieve that is by looking at speech tags. So speech tags are clarifying words that follow a line of dialogue. It is a noun or a pronoun followed by a verb, such as he said, or I replied, or she shouted. So most of the time when writers use a speech tag, it's for one of two reasons. They either want the reader to know who said what or how they said it. So without going too far into depth on adverbs, I wanted to mention something that Stephen King said in his book on writing. He was talking about adverbs and how writers should never use them, should go through their manuscript, look for all the adverbs, and just wipe them out completely. And I haven't done that myself, but I do think there's something to be said about the point that he's making. Writers shouldn't rely on an adverb to indicate what a reader is thinking or feeling. And readers also shouldn't need one to identify the tone of a character's statement. For example, let's say that your characters are having a conversation and one character gets angry. He isn't going to get angry right away. There's going to be a transition happening during their exchange. It should be apparent in the dialogue itself and also in the character's physical mannerisms and in their inner dialogue as to what's happening. And those things are what should reveal the situation to the reader. So that being said, if your speech tags are being used to convey the tone of the dialogue to the reader, then they're probably not needed. It might be that you need to go back and look at some of these other things and other ways that you can convey that tone in your writing. So as for the point about clarifying the speaker of the dialogue, you might think that this is a non-negotiable. I have to use a speech tag to tell who's speaking. Well, not necessarily. There are, again, other ways that you can indicate this information to the reader. And there are other ways that are going to make it flow a little bit better as they're reading it. For example, I can describe a character's groan followed by, do I have to? I don't necessarily have to put he asked after that statement because I've already pulled the reader's attention to that character because of the groan that he made. Another example of when speech tags aren't necessary is if your scene just has two people talking to each other. The reader is smart enough to know that one line of dialogue followed by another line of dialogue indicates that an exchange has just happened between the two. You don't have to say, he said, and then this one said, and then this one said. Um, and it's especially going to be really clunky, let's say, if your book gets turned into an audio book and it's, you know, read aloud, it's going to be extremely clunky if every single line of dialogue is followed by a speech tag. So what I recommend is go through a scene of your book and try just eliminating the speech tags altogether and read through it from a reader's perspective and just see, go through the scene and try to figure out where are the points where you actually get confused and you do need that clarity. But if you're reading it and you're not getting confused, you might start to realize that it flows a heck of a lot better. So I've also heard from some writers that they're really hesitant to use the word said a whole lot. Some people even go through the manuscript and just do like a find all on the word said and replace it with some other verb. And um, one of the things that I learned in college, I had a professor and his opinion was that the word said was almost invisible to writers nowadays, if that makes sense. Like when you're just reading a book, your eyes just completely scan over the word said. It's like it doesn't even register. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if you're constantly using some kind of fancy verb, it tends to slow you down when you're reading because your eyes 
are, are taking note of those new words and trying to trying to process them, if that makes sense. But the word said is so simple that you just scan over it completely. But that being said, <laughs> um, let's say again that your book is turned into an audiobook. Of course, you don't want the word said in every other line of dialogue. He said, she said, he said, she said. It's going to get super repetitive. And even if you replace those saids with other verbs, it's still going to be repetitive. Let me give you an example. So where were you? She asked. I told you. I was out, he stated. But where exactly? She prodded. I mean, I don't know. Out. Jeez, get off my case, he exclaimed. Why can't you be honest with me? She cried. Honest is relative, he retorted. So I won't go on, but obviously you get my point by now. It's very repetitive, especially when the words are being spoken aloud. Um, you don't need a speech tag after every single line of dialogue. It's evident to the reader that a conversation is happening and they just don't need it. And this is just a personal preference, but I would rather have the words said spoken aloud a bunch of times than words like retorted or, you know, clarified or I mean, I mean, just these other more complex verbs. That's just a personal preference, but I feel like it takes me out of the moment. It takes me out of the conversation that's being had. So this just brings me back to my point that something that you can do to try to simplify your writing and just make it flow a lot easier is take a look at your speech tags and just see where they are actually needed and just make sure that you're not relying on them to convey tone. I think that's the main thing. Um, and just make sure that you're not being repetitive with them. So play with it, go through your manuscript and try removing some, see how you feel about it. Try changing some of these complex verbs back to just a simpler said and just see how it looks and, and put your reader hat on and see how you feel about it. And also try seeing, you know, can I explain some of these things with physical mannerisms or, you know, facial expressions or inner dialogue? You know, can I say this in a better way? So this is one of my tips on simplifying your writing. Stay tuned for more and definitely hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.